Greetings, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Friday Morning at the Fun House alongside Mr. Martin Popoff. Good morning, sir. Yes, morning. Let me just get my volume adjusted here. Yeah. How are you doing this nice sunny morning here in Toronto? I'm telling you, it's been a really nice couple of days in New York and uh, we Good. had tons of rain, but the, it was like almost 80 degrees yesterday and I think it's going to be in the mid 60s today. So yeah. pretty excited nice. about that. Yeah, Good. kicking off the Good. holiday weekend, right? And yeah. uh, what better way to kick off a holiday weekend, Martin, than talking about our favorite bands of all time, right? Yeah, this is kind of the mother of all topics, isn't it? This is yes. like uh, as big as it gets. So as big as it gets, because we, you know, we have both been proclaiming for ages here on the channel and various other places what our favorite bands are. I did a show like two years ago where I listed my top 30 favorite bands of all time, but that was two years ago. Sometimes mm. things change over the course yeah, of a couple yeah. of years as we get older, right? So we are, you know, uh, depending on what we're listening to at the time or bands we're grooving on at the time or releases that have come out, it can sway your picks quite a bit. So we, we've been asked quite a bit, you know, Martin has said many times here on the show, uh, you know, this band and that band are one of my favorite bands of all time. So I started to see these comments from viewers like, well, really be great for Martin and you to pin down your 10 favorites of all time. So yeah. that is what we have tasked ourselves with. This was not easy. This was no. not easy right <laughs> absolutely yeah this was like uh this was based on a lot of different criteria that yeah. will all i guess come out as we go through the list so yeah, yeah. Exactly. so that being said martin kick us off with your number 10 okay so my number 10 i'm, I'm looking at my notes here i i have like seven or eight or nine that i that I went, when i was making this list are are the are the bubbling under so i'm i'm gonna start with an odd one here because i think this is gonna be a more on that later band Deep Purple. I'm surprised they're this low because um, I've often, they have been one of these that I, I have said is one of my favorite of all time. But, you know, 10 out of how, how many bands are there in the world? There's got to be more than 40, right? 50, yeah. 60 bands in the world? Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyways, so having them number 10 uh, is, uh, is still pretty high. But um, so I've got them at number 10. Um, you know, I almost feel like complaining about them more to say why they're so low, but I, I don't know. I, I won't do that. I mean, really, the only thing I don't like about Deep Purple is is the creepy, depressing, early, um, you know, uh, Nick Simper, Rod Evans uh, era. I, I just do not like that stuff. And of course, the classical album. But of course, everything after that is great. And I'm I'm perfectly a fan of Who Do We Think We Are and Stormbringer and, and uh, you know, Slaves and Masters and Come Taste the Band. All those albums we're not supposed to like too much. Battle Rage is on. Um, and, and all the Steve Moore stuff. I'm a big, I'm a big uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, a huge fan of that stuff as well. So they're on this list pretty high. Um, they need to be rewarded for being one of the best bands long in the tooth making some of their best music now and that that's why they have to be on this list because really everything after in rock i'm perfectly fine with and that's amazing because it's a long long catalog with a lot, yeah. lot of records so yeah so I've, I've got deep purple in here i pulled this out to show my favorite deep purple album it's kind of an odd choice but we did a contrarians episode where i ranked this my favorite deep purple album of all time and it's a long story but it's kind of based on the math of how many songs I like on that. And, and math is part of this whole list in total. So there you go, Deep Purple. Yeah, uh, a lot of good points you made there. I, I, I found this difficult because I, you know, in going back, I rewatched my top 30 episode from a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, at the time, <clears throat> you know, the, the top bands were pretty set in stone, but then you have all these other ones, right? And when you do a long list like 30, that's a lot of bands, right? And after a while, you're like, all right, they're on the list. That's all that really matters. It doesn't matter the order, right? But when you're doing a top 10, you kind of really have to think about this. And yeah. I look back on some of the bands that I had in my top 10 back then, and I still love them, but I'm like, I don't know if today in 2022, I'd put them in the top 10. Hmm. And I'll, I'll, as we go along, I'll probably talk about why some of these made it and some maybe didn't at the end of the episode. Maybe we can mention a couple that yeah. didn't quite make the cut. Uh, and I didn't pick my favorite albums for the most part from these. I just grabbed something. Just yeah, neither did I. Neither did yeah. I. Yeah. Uh, so my number 10, who I believe also did make my top 10 uh, the first time around when I did this. And I think, you know, this band for me, has just been, and most of these bands are old, older bands. 
there's not a I don't really have much of anything in my list from bands that have appeared over the last 30 years mm. yeah for a reason because you don't have as much history with them and blah 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 yep. but this band absolutely uh dream theater so Dream Theater has yeah. been, without a doubt, my favorite band of the last 30 years. I mean, not, it's not even close. I have followed them album after album, tour after tour, and, and all their albums that they put out, there's really only one of them that I don't like. That's The Astonishing. Uh, I'm a fan of all their other stuff. Like I said, I've seen them live more than any other band. And I, I, you know, I, I looked at them versus four or five other bands who obviously I've been listening to since I was a kid. And I was like, I, I probably like you did, you have to look at the whole discography, right? And there are some bands that I will rank very, very high, but like maybe out of 15 albums, I only love like maybe six or seven of them, right? Yeah. And so you have to kind of weigh that a little bit. So I look at Dream Theater and I'm like, all right, a lot of albums, they're the newest band on my list, but yet I really love almost everything that they've ever done. And I love all they're, that they're about. So I was like, you know what? They got to be in this list. I felt really bad about not putting them in this list over someone else, over another band that I probably really love a lot and maybe even a tiny bit more. But I look at the catalog, I'm like, yeah, but there's like five, six, seven, eight albums in their, in their discography that I really don't like much. So I weighed these pretty high. So number 10 for me is Dream Theater. Yeah. That's a really good point about not uh, these bands being older bands. And I totally defend that because I think to make the top 10, you have to have everything. And, and part of everything is that huge nostalgia factor. It has to be in there for a top 10, yeah. you know, as you, as you move down the list, I mean, my bubbling under has a few that are newer bands, but, uh, but really, I think, uh, I think it has to be all guns blazing to make someone's top 10. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, I, I mean, a perfect example. So I love black country communion, right? great band but they got what like four albums yeah as much as i love them they're, they're not going to beat over bands that i've been listening to and loving uh, everything they do for 50 years 45 years yeah. right it just doesn't work that way that does to me doesn't make much sense so, yeah and that's almost a separate issue the the having fewer albums so that's that's a thing that can combine with being newer band but some newer bands have lots and lots of albums and 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 they're they're perfectly okay for that but yeah the having few albums thing affected my list a little bit as well and pushed a couple things down which we yeah. can talk about okay so my next band is black sabbath again kind of odd finding them this low uh down at number nine pretty crazy this is my prized possession the fully signed sabotage um and it happens to be my favorite album. I, like I say, I, I haven't done that with all of these, but Black Sabbath is here again uh, to complain a little, to say, why are they so low? I mean, this brings up a super point. Um, I have a whole clutch of bands that if they would have stopped at a certain time, they would have been way higher up my list. So spoiler alert, there's no Queen on my list. There's no Rush on my list. Um who else? Let's just say those two for now. But those, those are two shining. There's no Judas Priest on my list. So those are three shining examples of bands. Had they stopped 82, 80, 83, something like that. Um, and that was the end of their catalog, you know, and their and their drummer died in their sleep after a night of drinking and choking on his own vomit in 1980. They would have been on my list, but they're not. Right. Um so Black Sabbath is here because I love that early stuff so much. They absolutely probably would have been number one had they stopped at a certain time. But they're also on this list because as you move forward, they ain't doing as good as Deep Purple, but they're doing pretty good. There's all that different stuff. There's the Dio years and there's Glenn Hughes and there's Ian Gillen and there's two or three of the Tony Martin era I like and, and the rest of them I'm not a super hater on except for a few. Uh, didn't like 13. I thought you just can't go back and try to make old Sabbath again. It just didn't, didn't feel real to me, but there's, there's enough there. And like I say, I mean, I've, I've often called sabotage my favorite album of all time. There's enough there in those first eight albums and enough there in five or six or seven more uh, to have them on this list. So they're, they're my number nine. Cool. More on that later. Okay. And Martin's first pick. <laughs> no surprise there, right? Yeah, no. So my next choice for uh, number nine, I almost left them out of this list. And they were in my top 10 two years ago. And there's a reason why. But then, again, you have to weigh, well, the albums that you really like in the catalog, do you really, really, really love them a lot? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do, does it outweigh 
the couple of albums in their catalog that you really don't care for at all. This is a perfect example of that. So it's Genesis. Hmm. Okay. I mean, you know, I love to death those Peter Gabriel era albums. I love the first four albums with Phil Collins on vocals. And I know you like the 80s stuff. I don't really care for it. I don't hate it. I hate some of it, <laughs> but some of it I don't mind. But man, all those 70s albums, every one of them, Duke, and then there were three, Nursery Crime, Fox, Trot, Lamb, Trespass, blah, 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 all that stuff. I just love it. It's to me, this is my favorite prog band because of that kind of 10 year era. And even though they really became not a prog band in the 80s, for the most part, into the early 90s, uh, I'm okay with that because I still treasure the old stuff. And I, I, I had one version of my list where Genesis was not on there and I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it, Martin. So, so they're on it. Number nine. It's funny. Spoiler alert. Not a single prog band on my list, um, but all of them would be soon on my list. Right. Uh, that's the thing. So, okay, here's an odd choice. Um, and I'll, I'll try to explain myself. Maybe no one's going to believe me, but I constantly lately bring up the jam. I, I just play these guys all the time. I never get sick of them. What did I do to prepare for this show this morning? I played the jam and only the jam. I mean, that I, they're just a go-to band for me. I just love that whole, you're immersed in that, in that rainy working class English thing, that, that Ray Davies-ness of, of Paul Weller's stories. Uh, I love the big buzzing, you know, bass sound of Bruce Foxton. It's a big Chris Squire, Getty Lee, Lemmy, but it's also a post-punk thing because there's a lot of interesting spaces in what they do. There's just a, a couple other interesting little things, a little press release thing from, from the first album. And here's my, my fully signed bootleg of the jam up there in, in pen. Um, but uh, I just I just love the, uh, you know, the the grittiness of it. They're not exactly a punk rock band. They're, well, they're they're basically the entire mod revival. I mean, the, every other band is just not all that interesting to me. But uh, and there's there's another one. Sound effects. And there's their last live album thing. The only the only stuff I don't like from them is really the last album, The Gift. Paul Weller went off into a weird space and did the Style Council after that, and then he's got this pretty cool solo career. But I just play these guys all the time. I I because I love the Kinks, uh, and I love the Who. But this is this is more the Who musically and the Kinks. Uh, there's some Pete in there as well, but there's a lot of Ray Davies in there. There's a lot of storytelling. Um, I just love love his voice. It's just got this shouty kind of voice. So it's just a band that uh, I never get tired of for some weird reason, even though there's, uh, what is there? One, two, three, there's a, there's a half dozen albums. Really, that's all they did. Huge band in England. So uh, yeah, odd choice, but uh, every time I play them, I just go, this is genius. So there you go, the jam. Yeah, I worked with a couple of guys when I was going to college uh, back in the mid 80s. You know, I was working in a restaurant for uh, you know, a little part time job while I was going to school trying to make a buck. And uh, I worked with a couple of dudes in the kitchen who were like were huge jam fans. And that's all they used to tell me. They're like, ah, it's yeah. just like a modern take on the who and the cakes. I was like, OK, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Works for me, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. My next choice. Uh, this band actually ranked higher last time I did this exercise. And I almost didn't include them in my top 10, strangely mm -hmm. enough. I don't know why, uh, because I really do like a lot, most of their albums, some a little more than others. That's uh, Rainbow. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, the Dio albums obviously are godly. The, the one Grand Bonnet album is pretty terrific. I like the Joe Lynn Turner albums to a degree, right? I don't, I don't think I love any of them as much as I love the first four albums. Uh, but they're really solid to very, very good. And I don't mind the Doogie White album. So not a big catalog, but, uh, you know, again, it's a catalog that I think for me, because of three or four albums, really elevates the whole catalog. And it's just a band that I've listened to a ton. I still listen to a ton. And, you know, anything with Blackmore on it, with the exception of Blackmore's not, I just can't get into that band. But uh, I just, uh, I, I find the music of Rainbow just uh, pretty captivating, especially, you know, like I said, there are a couple albums that for me are just, you know, absolute drop dead classics. So uh, they had to be on this list somewhere, but they, yeah. they're, they were higher. Rainbow for me, you, usually throughout most of my life has been like a number four or five band. So they've dropped a little bit here today. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I love Rainbow to Death too. And obviously I did a rainbow book. And um, but I would I would bump them down for a number of reasons. Like the catalog's too short with too much stuff. I'm not a huge fan of, not even a huge fan of the debut, not a huge fan of most of the Joe Lynn Turners, except I like the last one, don't like the Doogie album very much. So there's a lot of reasons why why I I, I would have to put them lower, but uh, but yeah, but still, you know love rainbow so yeah. all right so here's another kind of odd choice but this is another band every single time i'm asked about favorite bands uh and i'm i'm allowed to rattle off a few this band always comes up and that's uh xtc right. i pulled out an odd thing to show in this this is a this is a live bbc uh package with these cool colored things with prints on the front um this is just a band that uh has a very long and prolific catalog pete knows them rather well yep. um we did a cool episode on them um but it's just kind of like genius smarty pants pop it's not smarty pants metal but this is smarty pants new wave right um they're, they're you know they're just this band to go darn xdc they're so smart those guys right you know like you get mad at them because they're just such geniuses right i mean you you can compare what they do to the beatles and you know putting aside the enormity of the beatles history you could play the two and go wow well the, these guys are clearly three times as smart as the beatles all the time you know and and it's really interesting and odd and weird and there's neat neat uh production techniques and just strange strange takes on pop um love the early kind of more brasher more frantic stuff but really love that whole english settlement the black sea and mummer and skylarking that whole middle era long 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 middle era of stuff i like i'm not crazy about the last well the, the last couple are are the really stripped downy ones um but even the two before that i'm a, i'm a little down on but there's that long long middle period i just love to death they're some of my favorite albums of all time and then and then i'm fine with the early stuff as well you know the, the first three up to drums and wires are are sort of the the trilogy of the yeah. of the wiry guitar like like the band wire almost um kind of arrangements but then they get super genius so uh love xdc play them all the time yeah what an artsy unique as all hell band right it's just yeah yeah there's some great albums there good choice so here's a band that did not make my top 10 when i did this two years ago and uh you know sometimes like i say you you get into these uh things i don't want to call it a rut because that that's like a negative connotation but i i got to admit i've been listening to this band a ton more in recent years than i have in quite a long time and i don't know maybe it's because we've done a lot of shows on this band here on the channel could be uh but i have fallen in love all over again with rush okay and this is the uh Permanent yeah. Waves uh, reissue, yeah. remaster, special edition, what have you. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've always loved Rush. Uh, they've, throughout most of my life, have never been a top 10 band for me, but I always loved them. And I think what kind of brought this on, I've always adored and worshipped the 70s albums, but I was always hit or miss on most of the 80s albums. And I think I have found in recent years that I have rediscovered those albums and found actually quite a lot to love in that part of the catalog and also have spent quite a bit of time with the, the 90s and, and onward stuff. And that I think has made me appreciate the whole catalog even more where I wasn't just one of those. Yeah, I just like the 70s stuff. I don't like all that synthy stuff and all whatever. Now I'm kind of like, you know what, there's lots to love in, in that entire catalog. And I found that Rush has been one of the bands over the last year or two that I have listened to more than just about anybody else. And so I had a hard time keeping them off of this list. And I was like, you know what? They're, they're going to show up at whatever this is, number six. And, yeah. and I'm okay with that. So cool, cool. Yeah, Rush is the band that always comes up. Like when people, people are shocked when, I, when they say, oh, what's your favorite Canadian band, right? And I always go Max Webster. And I always say they're <laughs> one of my favorite bands of all time. And that shocks people. But the fact of the matter is it, it is that situation where those, those half dozen of Max Webster albums match up absolutely perfectly fine. I don't like the Rush albums anymore, maybe a little more. Um, but, but basically, you know, Max Webster and Rush blasting their way through the 70s and early 80s as, as being absolutely awesome. But then Max Webster's over. And that album, that that yeah. catalog just sits there as sacrosanct. As Small catalog album. and perfection every step of the way, right? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. My number six is uh, a band some of you may have heard of called uh, ACDC. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I've often ranked these guys as my as my uh, highest and favorite band. Um, so all of these are all pretty close at the top. Uh, I did pick an album that um, this is my favorite album after Highway to Hell. Um, in fact, it's my well, it'd be my third favorite favorite ACDC album. Um, so it would go Highway Highway to Hell, uh, Power Age, and then this. But um, I had to put them up here. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm almost cheating a little bit because, because, well, not really, because after the fact, even after this album, I get a lot of value out of Fly on the Wall and Razor's Edge and Stiff Upper Lip and those records in there. And I, I thought the last, you know, or the last album was pretty good. For some reason, I have this huge hate on for Rock or Bust, and I really like Black Ice. Uh, but yeah, love all the early stuff have been with ACDC since 77. Can't say it was the beginning because I remember the very first album I ever looked at and flipped over was Let There Be Rock in a, in a record store in Winnipeg. Um, but yeah, love them to death. Super unique band. Um, you know, obviously they have a very simple formula that they've kept the whole time. They've had the two lead singers, uh, but, but essentially, you know, they've been pals my whole life kind of thing, right? Uh, throughout throughout the whole life. So loads and loads and loads of nostalgia there with that band. You know, the whole school, it seemed like, had a copy of Back in Black, you know, back in grade 11 or whenever that was, uh, you know, the year before graduating, I suppose. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so much history, so much, so much greatness there. And, and obviously, yeah, the, the later albums, you know, they can be a little patchy, they get a little mellower, the production's not as good, but there's enough, you know, uh, gooey goodness there to, uh, to have them up here at number six. Yeah, and that was, I made a mistake before, so Rush was number seven for me, so okay. get the numbers back on track here, yeah. Pete. Uh, <laughs> so uh, my number six is uh, Led Zeppelin. Okay. Yeah, a band I've always loved. Uh, I think I have loved them to varying degrees over the years. You know, I think when, you know, throughout the 80s, when I was going through my, you know, really heavy period and thrash and all that kind of stuff, probably Zeppelin ranked a little lower for me. Uh, they've been coming back in a big way for me. I, again, I've always loved them, but I think their significance just uh, has is really hitting home with me at this point in time in my life, in my, you know, in what I listen to. And again, it's another example of not an enormous catalog and, you know, for me, the strength of this catalog is kind of undeniable. Yeah, there's there's a couple albums that I don't like as much as the others, but you know when you got physical graffiti and and I, Martin, I know you're not that crazy about the first two albums, but I I love them both. I like other albums better. The third album is terrific. The fourth album is just is legendary. This album is great. I like Presence a lot. You know, so and. Plus, I love all the live music, too, which I know a lot of it is just kind of like over the top and, and you know, very jammy and stuff. But I, I just I love the four personalities in this band. And to me, uh, they've got to be up here fairly high. So number six for me is Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Spoiler alert. They're not on my list, but they would have come pretty quick. <laughs> I, I did think about them and I thought, you know what? I mean, really, all of this is really good. I do love this as a pretty high percentage. But then I was thinking eight albums, you know, they're not particularly long. I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, a little ambivalent about some of it. But my next choice, oddly that you had Led Zeppelin there, because this uh, I have comparisons here. The Clash. The Clash to me um, are I, I, I pulled out a pretty interesting little set here, which is uh, all their singles on on CD sleeve. Isn't that cool? So all this is like, look, look at them all. That's so this a is a, a singles box set. Um, the funny thing about the Clash to me, they they are kind of a mystical Led Zeppelin sort of thing. Um, they they I guess they did a fair number of interview interviews in the run, but the run was very short. Um, but to me, you know, Joe Strummer dies early, and he's just this cool looking guy. He's like like a little bit like Robert De Niro and Taxi Driver crossed with crossed with a Bob Dylan and a rocker and Eddie, Co Eddie Cochran and all that. And then you've got Mick Jones, loads of personality, big pot smoker, um, you know, an interesting band did a, did a ton of different things, but to me, they're almost like they have that mythical quality. I remember Eric Wagner telling me that this about the Beatles, I might've mentioned this before and I stuck it in the forward in front of my old Sabbath book. And he said to me, he said to me one time, he goes, the Beatles, 
it's almost like they weren't even real, like they weren't even real people. That's how much they mean to me, right? It's like they, it's, it's, they literally exist out there in a mythical land. Yeah. Zeppelin is like that to a lot of people, and that's oh, yeah. why they're so high and so argued about. Yeah. Uh, but Clash is kind of like that to me as well. It's just a weird, weird. And it's funny when we talk about Zeppelin having eight albums and Clash, Clash really only has five albums, but they're a little bit like that Guns N' Roses thing. When you start adding it all up, they got a lot more music than you think, right? Because they got a double and a triple, tons and tons of singles and EPs that aren't on albums. Um, so, uh, so yeah, just love them to death for the variety of what they did. The, the very huge atmosphere, early punk rock, the classic that is London calling the triple album Sandinista, then going into other really odd stuff, being creatively brave. So there you go. That's enough Clash for today. <laughs> and I'm sure to no one's surprise, Clash will not make my list. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's even kind of surprising they made my list, but yeah, there you go. All right, so here it's time to piss off the Led Zeppelin fans once again, because uh, when I did this exercise two years ago, there were a bunch of people that were like, there is no way in hell that Led Zeppelin can ever come be underneath Uriah Heep on anybody's <laughs> list. Well, <laughs> get over it, yeah. folks. They are on mine. And that's no, yeah. there's no disrespect to, to Led Zeppelin. I love them. I just love yeah. Uriah Heep a little bit more and yeah. I'm allowed to, and that's just the way it is. So get used to it. Uh, I love these guys. There's a lot of things I love about this band. They've got a ton of albums and yeah, they have a handful that are, you know, kind of a little subpar, but they've got way, may, way more albums for me that totally do it for me that I really like a lot. And I love the fact, kind of like the deep purple thing you were talking about before. I love the fact that the, this band has persevered through thick and thin, and they're releasing some of the best music of their career over the last decade and a half. And that means a lot to me. That really does. And uh, I love the early 70s stuff with David Byron. I like some of the early 80s stuff with Peter Golby. And I like a ton of the Bernie Shaw era stuff. And it's really, you know, I can really honestly only say that there's probably maybe two, maybe three albums that I don't really care for that much. Although even those albums have some material I kind of dig, but everything else, I don't even, what is it, 23 albums, 24? I don't remember. It's a lot. Uh, all, most of that stuff I love. And I think, and this band is always great live. And I just love the fact that they just bring it and they're, you know, their music is what I love. Big, heavy guitars and have an organ. It's just, that's my thing. Right. And great vocals. And that's just, it's heavy. It's light. It's poppy. It's psych. It's proggy. It's medley. I mean, it's just, it's everything I love about music all wrapped up into one. So that's one of the reasons why uh, Uriah Heap will always rank high for me. And they have since, you know, 45 years ago or whatever so yeah they they would have come pretty soon on my list as well and and i i swear look at yourself is better than any deep purple album i mean look at yourself is doing deep purple twice as good as deep purple ever did from the production from the excitement from the progginess from the way the hammond is there from mick box's sound um look at yourself is better than machine head i think um, you know, at that golden, golden period of when they're both at their peak kind of thing, right? And I mean, Look at Yourself is their best album, in my opinion. I've been saying that yeah. for years. And I know everybody likes to default to Demons and Wizards, and that probably is their number two. But I've always felt that Look at Yourself is a little bit stronger, yeah. personally. And you get into the 80s, I, I feel there's as much excitement for me around Abominog and even Head First, believe it or not. A lot of people are not big Head First people as there is around, um, you know, Perfect Strangers and House of Blue Light. And they're both, like you say, competing all guns blazing for making amazing, amazing music now. So, yeah, yeah. Gr great, great band for sure. Yeah. 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 All right. My next choice, number four. Blue Oyster Cult. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I'm putting them next. Um, you know, obviously I did a Blue Oyster Cult book early and then it's been updated a couple times. And then I did the Blue Oyster Cult visual biography. I draw pictures of Blue Oyster Cult all the time and make my fake ads and all that stuff. Just love them to death. Uh, I, I, I always say my favorite lyricists of all time are Pai Dubois, Max Webster and Kim Mitchell, Captain Beefheart and the army of writers that writes all this Blue Oyster Cult stuff. So the, the lyric stories are fascinating. The music stories are even interesting. Just these guys, when they talk about their band, it's just always interesting, right? Um, you know, the cover art is probably the greatest cover art band of all time, I think. Uh, very, very likely could be. Um, and just, just 
I, I really like the catalog throughout. I, I love the whole idea that with this band, um, all of their later albums through all those tribulations, I, I'm fine with Club Ninja, fine with Revolution by Night. I love I love the two stranded ones in the middle there. And uh, I thought I thought the symbol remains was a great comeback as well. So I'm just loving the entire catalog. Um, there's there's really nothing uh, that I don't like. I mean, oddly, my least favorite are the black and white period albums, weirdly enough. But uh, but among my favorite albums of all time are Mirrors and Cultosaurus and Fire of Unknown Origin and Spectres for sure. I like those ones always come up in my top, whatever that would be, 40 say. Um, and that's a lot of Blue Oyster Cult albums. So just a super interesting band, um, you know, keyboards, pop, a lot of variety. Um, I think that's the main thing about them. They just are super interesting. Um, all, all those, you know, I love the conspiracy theory stuff and the UFO stuff and the paranormal stuff and just the smart downtown New York vibe of them. Like they're the thinking man's metal band. I mean, that's why, that's why they weren't bigger than they were, but they were pretty darn big anyways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Blue Oyster Cult, always have time for them, play, play their stuff still all the time. Yeah, it's a great choice. They're, they're probably, they just missed out on my top 10. They're, they're easily a top 15, 16. They're in that mix somewhere. Yeah. I, I love them. And yeah. I don't dislike any of their albums. And yeah, that, that last album is a gem, I think. So yeah, great, great choice. All right, here's another uh, new entrant to my top 10. Uh, this was, I think, also pretty much a top 15 band when I did this two years ago. Uh, but I'm just, I'm finding, I'm listening to them all the time lately of late uh and it's not just because they just put out a new album a month or so ago i i've been listening to a lot of the catalog just constantly maybe it's because we talk about them quite a bit on in the prog seat or i don't know but i've always loved them but i just find i'm loving them even more uh, as time goes on that's jethro tell hmm. and here we got songs from the wood one of their gems in the catalog i again yeah another band that does a lot of cool things really really well and i think that that seems to be kind of a theme we're both going through here we we, we, we tend to gravitate towards these bands that bring a lot of variety uh you know tall it's like blues rock and hard rock and folk and pop and prog and all this kind of cool stuff and uh i, I love that they're so different you know flutes and hammond organ and synths and heavy guitars and ah, just great love them to death so that's my number or whatever we're at number five cool yeah that's another one of these bands a little bit like genesis in some ways for me that that i just feel like i never there's always more to explore in the catalog and i never get around to really learning like i have no idea what goes on on passion play or war child or too old to rock and roll if that's even the right title i mean there's there's and, and then a few of the 80s albums. I love the songs from the wood kind of period, that whole that yeah. whole thing in there, Heavy Horses and A and all, all that range in there um, and the early stuff. But yeah, it's it, it is a great choice. What a what a long, great catalog. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With for sure. Yeah. And that, and that was number four. Again, I don't know how to count today. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, that was still, I'm four, still in so my post COVID fog, I guess, because I'm, I'm right, saying yeah. wrong things and I've been yeah. doing it all week. So it's like, yeah. So they were down week. between 10 and 15 for you before, eh? Yeah. 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 Hmm, yeah. Interesting. Okay. So up to the top three, um, I, I make no apologies for this one at all. The Damned. Um, it is a long, amazing, smart, thoughtful musicologist super music fan encyclopedias of music knowledge type band who does a lot of 60s stuff a lot of punk there's even a little bit that you might consider proggy some heavy stuff um there's there's your cover of strawberries look at that front cover look at the back eh the strawberries all there um but, you know, the personalities in the band, Captain Sensible and his, you know, his jerkiness thing that he's got going and his love of, of uh, subway trains and transit systems and Dave Vanian with the whole goth vampire thing and um, Brian James, an amazing early super heavy punk guitarist. I mean, the first album is Ferocious Punk. And then the next one produced by Nick Mason from Pink Floyd, it's it's still punk, uh, believe it or not. Rat Scabies with his very, you know, crazy drum tornado, Keith Moon style. Um, and then they make, a, you know, absolutely pristine, a couple of goth albums. They come back to punk. Um, 
but they've just done so many different things produced by Tony Visconti in later years, um, a long catalog. They fight like cats and dogs between them. Um, I've written a damn book recently that isn't out yet, but it's, it's in layout now, but I went and did what I did with the clash and Zeppelin where I wrote reviews of every single damn song. It's my favorite book I've ever done. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that coming out, but, uh, but this is a band that I just, uh, for the last 20, 30 years, they're up there as, uh, oh, I'll go, go through my iPod. Oh, there's some Dan. Play that. Play that. Play it again. Just just like like willfully, no problem. They have so much so much range in what they do. Um, I'm always finding stuff to play by them. And uh, yeah, there you go. The Damned, number three. Cool. cool. Yeah, I had a feeling they'd be, they'd be ranking pretty high for you. Yeah. <laughs> all right. My top three have not really changed at all. Maybe the order has a little bit, but uh, my number three is, has been pretty steady for me for a long, long time. I've got a love affair with the singer. I have when he was in his prior band to this. He has helmed this band for many, many, many years. I love all the different eras of the band. I love the early blues rock stuff. I like I the big, more metallic version in the 80s. And I really enjoy their more recent output as well. The band is White Snake. David Coverdale and company, I pulled out uh, Saints and Sinners just to grab something off the shelf. There's the man himself. I just love Coverdale. To me, he's like one of the ultimate rock stars. He just oozes everything about being a rock star. He's got the look. He's got the voice. And, uh, you know, even in his elder statesman years, I still think he's really good at what he does. His voice isn't what it once was, but I'm okay with that. But it, to me, it's all about the music. I love the bluesy stuff. I love the heavy stuff. He's had killer guitar players in the band. Uh, I honestly like all the albums. I don't really think there's any White Snake album that I hate. Um, they all are different and some of them are familiar. And I, I love the fact that he just kind of took what he learned in Deep Purple and kind of did his own thing, you know, sort of different, but sort of not. And uh, he made White Snake, uh, you know, his own vision of what, you know, a, a, a true bluesy hard rock band should sound like. And I think they're always one of the best at doing what they do. So, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. You're not going to see that that high up on a lot of people's lists, right? You know, that's a that's a pretty uh, idiosyncratic Pete choice, right? So it is. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I know a lot of people who like White Snake, but they don't really love them like I do. I guess I don't know. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I've just I've had a love affair with that band for so many years, and it's like it's I I always like it. Really was the Slide It In album that did it for me, but then the '87 album just reeled me in, and then I like really went back and dove into the early part of the catalog. I'm like. This is great too. And I've been following ever since. So yeah. Yeah. I think the ceiling for them, it probably has to do with like they they aren't as serious and artistic as as all those big 70s legends, right? Yeah. Yeah, true. So, true. Yeah, yeah. But fun. <laughs> All right, so here's a band. We're up to number two now. Um, this is a band that I have often cited as my favorite band of all time. So I'm on record a bunch of times with this one. Um, but they're num number two in this case, ZZ Top. Um, Again, this is a cat. I, I just I just look at them on stage and I just break up laughing. They've just got the greatest look of any band when they when they break into those really subtle little Dusty and Billy stage moves at times together, you know, just like, you know, even their stage moves are old man stage moves and, and they just look great. They look amazing. Right. And and there's no no one has done costumes as well as Easy Top either. I mean, they're they're tasteful. They're they're weird. They're Americana. They're all these things wrapped up together like like they're the, they're the greatest looking band of all time, I think, uh, up there on stage. And um, they're this high on the list because, you know, even though I might complain a little bit about uh, Afterburner and Recycler the most, and maybe a little bit the first two albums, a little bit. Um, every single other record, and of course the live side of Fandango, I don't care about at all, but every, every, everything else, I love to death and I love Rhythmine and I'm a big fan even of XXX and I love to death Mescalero. La Futura is a bit of a letdown, um, but uh, Antenna I love uh, and, and Tejas is... I've often called this my favorite. It's just this long catalog with a lot of variety, a lot of great productions, um, incredible, incredible. My favorite blues guitarist of all time, for sure. I've, I often rank him as my favorite guitarist. I've got him up there with Kim Mitchell and Brian May um, as my favorites. Um, but, uh, and love his voice, love Dusty's voice. 
Um, there's some incredible, strange drumming on here. There's the dirty secret of Frank not being the drummer on some of the ones I love later on, but that's okay. Um, and, uh, and yeah, a lot of intrigue behind this band, a lot of style and eccentricity out of Billy and, and both of them, you know, you see the insides of their houses and stuff and it's the collecting that they do and just the, the amazing style that they went through life with. Um, everything about them, uh, they make me laugh. They've got great heavy metal riffs. Um, they do blues amazing. Even when they get a little mellow, uh, they're, they're incredible. And, and so many different phases to what they did. They've got the electronic drum sound, which they did great on Antenna. Um, so yeah, just this, just this relentless catalog of awesomeness from start to finish, even though it's a long, long catalog, even though people don't pay a lot of attention to the last albums. I think the last bunch of albums... Uh, I, I play those way more than the early ones, even over the last 20 years, say. So, yeah, there you go. ZZ Top, number two. Great choice. I love ZZ Top. I, uh, they didn't make my top 10, but they're floating somewhere between 11 and 20. And yeah. that has really risen for me in, in years. I, I, I sometimes think that if, if we were to do this again in like two years, they might even make my top 10 because I listen to ZZ Top quite a bit now. Love them. Yeah. And I was never a huge fan. I always liked them, but I, the last like 20 years or so, They've really risen up in stock for me quite a bit. Nice. Great band. All right. So my top two are no surprise to anybody, right? There's no mystery here whatsoever. However, these two bands have been vying for my top spot and flip-flopping back and forth for the last 40 years. I mean, the only other band that ever challenged these two bands for me was about a five-year period where Metallica was like my world. You know, the, the mid 80s through the end of the decade, early 90s. I mean, Metallica for a, for a brief time there was my favorite band. But otherwise, all throughout my life, you know, post Kiss, I should say, uh, these two bands have been either number one or two. And they flip flop quite a bit. I've been saying for the last probably 20 years that Deep Purple was my favorite band of all time. Uh, they're going to come in number two today. Nice. Only because uh, I think I've been listening to the other guys a bit more over the last year or so. And that usually is how I rank them. Uh, but make no mistake. And what's interesting is Martin's number nine and 10 are my number one and two. That I was going to I was going to throw in something early on and, and mention that. But I was like, I will just get to it. But yeah, I mean, this is if it's not my favorite album of all time, it's a it's a top two or three in rock. I, I love all the eras. Uh, I'm with you on the the Rod Evans era. I like that stuff. I don't much listen to it. I think I could probably, I would be okay if I never had to hear those albums again. I don't dislike them. I think there's plenty of good stuff on there, but that's for me when I want to hear Deep Purple, I don't, I don't reach for those. But the Mark II, the Mark III, I love the Tommy Bolin stuff. I love the reunion stuff. I adore the Steve Morse era. Uh, in a big way. And again, like you mentioned, along with Uriah Heap, a band that's making some of the best music of their career really late in their career. And that means a lot to me. I love the attitude. I love Blackmore. I'm a Blackmore fanatic. Uh, Ian Gillen's my favorite singer of all time. Uh, I love John Lord. Miss him so much. I mean, the whole band is great. Ian Pace, most underrated drummer on the planet. What's not to love? I love him. So Hammond organ and guitars. There we go. Once again. Yeah, cool. All right. <clears throat> okay. So my number one, uh, my number one favorite band of all time, Thin Lizzy. I'm putting Thin Lizzy as number one. Um, you know, I, I took a good, good long think about this. And uh, I love, I love the folky Irish first couple of albums. I love the rawness and the variety and the surprise of the, of the heavy Eric Bell album. Um, I, I, nightlife not so much but jailbreak start to finish is amazing johnny the fox is super up there as one of my favorite albums so is bad reputation so is black rose lately so is chinatown and i did a contrarians episode where i called renegade my favorite thin lizzie album of all time and that has not faltered and that's that's been around for a long long time i love those tracks nobody even knows on that one like it's getting dangerous and the title track um there's just something just so regal about that album well, I know what it is. I mean, I'm, I'm being psyched out by the flags and the, and the red and the green and all that, right? The gold, right? Um, but, um, but no, I, I love that to death and I love Thunder and Lightning. So when I looked at this entire catalog, um, a long catalog with a lot of variety, 
Uh, I, I love everything about it. I left out fighting. Fighting is an amazing, amazing mm -hmm. record as well. You know, I, I had that probably had that as a new release. So that was right around the time when I got into got into them. Uh, so 75. Um, but yeah, this this one's probably my most played over the years uh, because I played it to death uh, early on. But I love Phil's storytelling, um, his phrasing, the way the way he's just up there commanding the microphone, whether it's on stage or on record. But yeah, that phrasing thing where he where he you know, trips in a little poetry, the way he, he says things, um, just the whole world he creates, you know, the whole Irish world, the whole cowboy world, the whole, you know, the boys are back in town world. Um, love all the mellow stuff they do, love the heavy stuff they do. Kings of the Twin Leads, they do the, the tastiest, classiest, most memorable twin leads out of anybody doing this from your Wishbone Ash and Almonds, then it's Thin Lizzy, then it's priest and maiden and all that right um but yeah love that about them as well but i i i think they're in here because i i have no problem saying you know anything from from fighting all the way through to for sure renegade um you know most of those records could uh, on any given day i'll go just put them on and go yeah it's got to be in my top favorite albums of all time uh love the productions just e everything about the band um is uh is amazing so there you go my number one thin lizzy cool uh, a pleasant surprise i love thin lizzy too i i did not expect that do you want to know who i thought was going to be your number one who motorhead yeah motorhead's on my bubbling under yeah motorhead uh yeah, they almost made the list yeah it's true you thought it'd be my number one wow yeah that's uh yeah interesting yeah i did not expect thin lizzy yeah i'm pleasantly surprised yeah. so can you guess my number one I think so. I think yeah, so. I think, yeah. I think we do. <laughs> so, you know, the band that changed my life and I've, I've had a love affair with Black Sabbath since the first time I heard Paranoid back in whatever year that was, 1978 or 79, something like that. And uh, whether it's the classic Ozzy era, whether it's the Dio albums, whether it's the Born Again with Ian Gillen, whether it's uh, the album with Glenn Hughes, and a bunch of the Tony Martin albums, which I love quite a bit. And I even like 13. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah I, you know, I, yeah. You know, I mean, we know the albums I don't like, right. I don't care for never say die. I don't care for forbidden, uh, you know, technical ecstasy. I like a lot, but that's not one of my favorites from the early years. And uh, yeah, there's one or two Tony Martin albums that I don't like as much as the others, but for the most part, I just, I just love this band. I love Tony Iommi to death. I love big, heavy, doomy guitar riffs. I mean, that's that's my thing. And all these great singers and all these great albums. And uh, they just do it for me. And they always have. And I, again, they're beating out Deep Purple today because I've just been listening to more Sabbath over the last year or two than I have Purple. Not by much, because I listen to them a lot too. But that's kind of how I do this. I'm like, all right, so who have I been really grooving to quite a bit in recent times? And that's why today Black Sabbath is going to come in number one. Again, if we decide to do this in two years just for the shits and giggles, they may flip flop again. I don't know. Or maybe some other band might, you know, like maybe all of a sudden sticks is my number one band. And that's another that's one that just missed the cut for me. Uh, I was I was wrestling with, you know, when I was talking with Genesis earlier on, Genesis and like sticks were kind of battling over who's going to make the list um because sticks is a band that i have even though i've always loved them i love them even more now than i used to so you know there's a few bands like sticks in kansas who are kind of yeah, like right there I on the periphery either, yeah. queens right on the periphery for me ufo i had ufo in my top 10 two years ago mm -hmm. and i couldn't justify putting them in this time around because i'm like i love the band but it's that subset of albums from the mid to late 70s that mean everything to me. And while I like a lot of other albums in the catalog, I don't know if I like all those enough well, for sure. yeah. to justify, right? To put Makes them in sense. the top. Yep. Priest didn't make my list. Maiden didn't make my list. I mean, you know, there's a lot of bands that you would think, oh, I can't believe the Pete didn't include them. Well, you know, there's reasons for it. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the same reasons for me. <laughs> Just large swaths of records that I don't play very much. And I, I never really did think they were that good from yeah. some of these classic bands, right? Yeah. yeah so and that's why that's why i've penalized you know well it's it, it's it's more it's more i think on my list it's more sabbath being down there 
you know, Deep Purple is an odd one. I mean, it just seemed to get bumped out by these bands I just am more passionate about in a weird way. But but on, on paper, Deep Purple definitely should be. I think on paper, Deep Purple should be higher than Sabbath, but Sabbath's great, great periods are, are better than Deep Purple's great periods. Put it that way. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny how there are bands here that, you know, you think, you think, I, I guess 10 isn't enough to, to bring in all the bands you absolutely love a lot. Right. So that's yeah. the thing. So. Well, I mean, that's the problem I ran into two years ago. I was originally going to do my top 20 and then I was like, God, how can I keep these bands out? And then all of a sudden the balloon to 30. And even then there was bands that I, that missed the cut that I love so much. And people are like, I can't, how could you leave such and such band out? I'm like, well, I only got 30 slots, right? I can't, I like a lot of bands. I, I can't include everybody. So I think 10 is is more of a challenge for us and maybe more definitive but again i, I guarantee you martin if we if we two years from now two years from today if we yeah. decide to do this all over again i bet you our list will be a little different yeah yeah It'd be interesting to see yeah yeah well I'll, I'll i'll rattle off a few quick ones here um so my my honorable mentions my bubbling unders were motorhead uh gillen i brought out one gillen just, yeah, just this one. because again <laughs> The catalog's not that short, but it is a little short. Um, and every album I love to death. Um, so they're they're my they're my Max Webster, and that's why Max Webster is in my bubbling under two. Uh, they're, they're identical reasons for them to be so high. Love every album. Don't have enough albums, right? Yeah. Um, Clutch is my newest band uh, in here uh, because I play Clutch all the time, and and they're they're a band that unlike Black Country Communion, they have a lot of albums, right? They're yeah. they're in they're in the dozen ish range, right? Something yeah. like that. So they have a lot of records, uh, you know. And then bands I couldn't put in that I've I've often said the Dictators, you know, but but it's really only three four albums kind of thing. You can't put them in. Love Hate. Everybody knows I talk about Love Hate all the time, and and yeah, I love like four Love Hate albums a lot. So that's a weird one. Uh, Zeppelin, Rush, Magazine was in my bubbling under, Kate Bush, Judas Priest for the amazingness of the 70s, really more than anything, Queen, same same reason, Peter Gabriel, Captain Beefheart, I love to death, um, Badlands is another one of those weird ones you can't put oh, yeah. in because you love the two albums, they only made two, and then the, you know, the posthumous demo-y thing, um, so that's my, my bubbling under. Yeah, mine are... Uh... Kansas Sticks, I already mentioned. King Crimson, really risen for yeah, me. I've been, yeah. I've been listening to so much King Crimson the last couple of years. Uh, so they're right under for me. Gentle Giant, just missed yeah. my top 10. UFO that I already mentioned. Queen, Thin Lizzy, Opeth of the newer bands, Symphony X of the newer bands, uh, Judas Priest as well. So that's kind of for me, like the ones that are just kind of sitting right below my like yeah. top 15 or top 20, something like that. So there's lots of others, but uh, those are the, the, the main ones. Yeah. <laughs> So there you have it, everybody. Uh, our 10 favorite bands of all time, at least here in 2022. So uh, ask us again, we might not tell you the same. So uh, <laughs> Martin, what's going on over at uh, in your neck of the woods? Contrarians, new books? Yeah, we had a technical XC Contrarians go up and I think Marco's going to be putting up the uh, the, the regular show Dawkin one. Um, I've got the podcast history and five songs. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but the last one got some debate. Um, is there a new wave of British heavy metal sound? And then for all the books, martinpopoff.com. Cool. Sounds good. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Stay tuned tomorrow for the UK Connection, where Simon, Stephen, and myself will be uh, talking about our favorite and least favorite Queen albums. And then we've got uh, album homework assignment on Sunday, Easter Sunday. Lynn Versace and myself going head to head with none other than Mr. Chris Allo officiating the proceedings. So that's coming up on Sunday. For Martin Popo, fine, Key Pardo. Have a good holiday weekend, everybody. We'll see you on Monday with the Hudson Valley Squares. Take care. <laughs>